Good morning, everyone. It's my uh, honor to moderate this uh, panel today in the SATS conference. Uh, the topic of the panel is emerging trends and opportunities in the Israeli digital health ecosystem. And I am very honored to have uh, panelists that are coming from this specific field. Uh, with, we have together uh, Anne Laurent Schock, head of Kukerman Life Science. We are uh, a leading investment bank working in life science from in Israel and Switzerland. And we are involved in uh, transactions of uh, fundraising, m &A, licensing in all the life science spectrum and obviously in the digital health uh, uh, world. So today we have with us uh, five panelists uh, that are involved in this field for many years. And I will start uh, by uh, Dr. Alexandra vallon Ebera, who is today a senior director in, in Roche Diagnostics. And she's in charge of the global BD in the diagnostic biomarker and digital healthcare solutions. We have with us today uh, Roy Wiesner, who, who is uh, managing director of Emun Fund, uh, today the largest uh, venture capital fund, funds, group of funds in Israel. We have with us Eyal Aviran, who is the CEO of uh, an incubator of uh, uh, life science technologies called Galilofec Innovation. And we have together as well, Lior Teitelbaum, who is the Chief Business Officer of Futurix, who is, that is an uh, incubator uh, which exists for many years in Israel. And we have Ophir Shahaf, who is uh, VP Business Development of eHealth Ventures, um, as well, uh, Digital Health Focus Fund in Israel. So before, before we, we start, I want to show a few pictures of a few numbers, sorry, about the life science industry in Israel in 2021. It will help all our audience to understand where, what's happening today. We have today, uh, 1,750 life science company active, about 150 more every year. And you can see in this uh, pie that digital health is today about 500 companies. And it's uh, the same number as those in biotechnology. And today it's the largest growing sector in the, in the life science innovation. In the second slide, you can see uh, one of the topics we will discuss in a minute is uh, health tech convergence that we can call as well biotech convergence, which is uh, how in Israel there is this specific ecosystem merging uh, and the technologies coming from the biology on one hand and from the, the high tech on the other hand, which is giving birth to many new fields that we will discuss today around digital health, which is telemedicine, monitoring, artificial intelligence, digital therapeutics, including as well some uh, big data analytics and computational biology all around this uh, digital uh, health uh, uh, segment. In the next slide, uh, it's a picture today of the companies um, uh, in, the, in the digital health sector. And you can see that 60% of the, the, the company have been created uh, since 2020. So uh, out of the, it, it's, it's an amazing boom in the last years of the number of companies in this, in this field. Um, to, today, the, the number of investment as well is, is, has been multiplied by four times in the last five years in Israel and in the world, it, it was doubled. So we have a kind of an acceleration of investment in the Israeli market for those di digital health startups. And in the next slide, you can see that it's, it's spread over uh, several sectors. The largest one today in terms of number of companies 
is the digital therapeutics because there is a high need and especially in CNS, but as well, you have the remote monitoring, the decision supporting for clinicians, the clinical workflow, the diagnostic, patient engagement and assisting device. So all this on the left side is the, the subsectors and on the right side, you can see that uh, the, the most funded sector is today the decision support and diagnostics. Uh, and then you have digital therapeutics and clinical workflow, but it, it's more balanced in terms of, uh, of investment in those sectors. All these numbers are coming from the, the industry association. And we're gonna talk to now with our uh, panelists of specific examples. I will ask each of you to make a short, when you start speaking, to make a short introduction about yourself and your role in, uh, in your organization. And uh, maybe I will start with, with Alexandra uh, that is in charge of a very unique program in Israel and uh, how it is, what does she see in, in terms of uh, trends in digital health by the, the angle of diagnostics so Alexandra, you, you can introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more what you, you are seeing today. Sure, thank you, Laurel. Um, so um, as, as, uh, as Laurel mentioned, I'm part of uh, global partnering and more specifically actually within a chapter called Technology and Science where uh, we are uh, looking into insights, foresights, and also insights in that sense. And um, this actually better informs us on decisions with regards to the future of diagnostics. And um, importantly, uh, what we have also been um, uh, seeing uh, in digital health is more specifically a uh, um, the lack of scale. And uh, the, the lack of scale comes actually from uh, I would say three major points. One is that uh, there is a need to go for more and more complete solutions, more integrated solutions. And this is yet a challenge when you need to actually first nail it down with a very specific use case. So it doesn't just happen uh, with, I would say, necessarily a single player. It may be actually uh, integrated solutions uh, through multiple players. Second is the lack, um, the lack of, of bandwidth in, in delivering internationally. I mean, this comes through uh, different bottlenecks, um, name it through interoperability issues, um, possibility to eventually access data, um, to be able to, to integrate different data sets and so forth. And of course, all the topics of um, uh, privacy preserving. And then uh, a third is uh, a lack of financial stability if we are referring to the smaller companies when if they have to deliver on more complete solution, this, this is actually uh, um, more of a challenge to them and, and uh, it requires certainly stronger funding. So with, with this observation, we, we have uh, thought about uh, how could we engage uh, with uh, digital hubs and Israel being one of the digital hubs. And uh, we have basically uh, put together, um, I would say a very unique program whereby um, we are designing uh, challenges uh, that are involving in, in our organization at Roche that are involving customers, affiliates, or life cycle teams uh, and different lines of experts and elaborating very, very specifically what those challenges are about and how do they actually um, could fit in to the very holistic view that we have around uh, the future of disease management. And so we are is issuing um, every year a call for, uh, for proposals around those challenges. And uh, this is a collaboration that we have with, uh, with the moon. And uh, we, we are looking at uh, providing a very intimate, intimate guidance to uh, the companies that are newly formed and selected um, and in order for them to actually achieve a concrete proof of concept that will be validated also not only with uh, uh, data sets that are coming uh, from different Israeli data providers, but also with data sets that we are providing from Roche. Um, and the goal is, is to reach um, 
a proof of concept that uh, where we could see a, um, a, a concrete path forward, where we could accompany them also in understanding what are the requirements very early on to deliver um, as much as possible internationally. We do understand that there are some uh, specificities to um, uh, each countries, and there, thereby, I mean, this this needs actually um, again some some uh, very clear roadmap on on how to approach those different markets. Um, so we 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 are uh, looking at engaging with those companies over those nine months, but we're also looking at continuing those engagements and actually taking them uh, for the successful one, obviously, um, uh, towards the market. So this is the contribution, at least the first contribution that we see uh, to the Israeli innovation ecosystem. And uh, of course, we, we are also engaging a side with, uh, with other companies that fit with regards to our three pillars, uh, which uh, basically consist of, of providing more and more of uh, those uh, integrated testing solutions. Uh, to deliver medical value, uh, which consists of also enabling confident healthcare decisions and uh, also on the longer run, improving the care along the patient journeys. Okay, Alexandra, it's a, it's a good uh, overview of what you are doing. I, I understood, and, and, and maybe Roy will talk about it as well, that, that part of the, the, the technology you are reviewing is as well uh, um, based or... or, or or issued from the, the Israeli health system digitalization, you, you are relying on the, the existing uh, infrastructure or, or, or system. This is something which is important or it's anecdotal? No, no, I think it's very important uh, indeed. I mean, the, the, the program also, uh, as it was uh, positioned within organization, is that it's also an enabler um, to access longitudinal data sets and to access you know, AI capabilities that are um, in some cases very special um, in, in Israel. And uh, we, for instance, have as part of a first cohort, uh, a company that is approaching um, uh, synthetic, uh, um, synthetic uh, data uh, generation in digital pathology. Um, and uh, expanding that through attention learning approaches uh, to go in the area now of multiomics. Um, and then we have another company that is um, uh, applying causal AI in order to uh, provide treatment uh, recommendations that would encompass uh, both efficacy and tolerance. Um, so there are definitely, uh, the infrastructure is an important point. The, the data access uh, is an important, uh, the in and outpatient uh, data connection uh, as well is, uh, is important. Um, so that makes it of course uh, attractive uh, for us. So I believe everyone will, will talk about this data access, which exists for so many years here. Roy, so Alexandra talked about a very specific project that uh, Roche is developing with the moon. Uh, maybe you have on the health tech convergence or bioconvergence, depending from which angle you look at it, some, uh, some experience you want to share on, and, and the trend you are seeing from, from a moon, from one of the largest in uh, institutional fund in Israel. Sure, thanks, Laurent. Um, yes, yeah, so in Emuna, I would just mention uh, we have both an early stage fund called Velocity and a late stage fund. Um, and so we really see, I would say, the, the entire spectrum. And actually, I'll, I'll connect to uh, you know, the program with Roche um, and to another angle, which is you know, the source of the innovation in Israel. Um, so, for example, one of the companies in the program comes from uh, the Technion, based on technology from the Technion. And what we see is in Israel, a very vibrant academic uh, setting uh, from which um, a lot of technology comes out and tech transfer offices, uh, which are well-versed in commercializing uh, that technology. So that is one angle. The second angle and another company in that program is actually what we call the, the tech to help uh, trend. Um, Israel traditionally, you know, when you go back uh, 15 or 20 years, um, the big successes were in the more traditional tech. Um, mm -hmm. And really the health tech is something that has been growing over the past uh, several years, as you've shown in your 
slides, um, but we're really seeing that. We see entrepreneurs uh, which, uh, who have already been quite successful, uh, had, for example, you know, uh, previous exits in traditional tech. It could be uh, even you know, in fintech or other areas. And now they feel they want to do something substantial, something meaningful in the healthcare space. Uh, we at Imun, uh, for example, we have a number of uh, entrepreneurs in residence who come including without the founder, including Sorry? the founder of Imun. Including the founder, exactly. So, uh, uh, you know, the co-founder uh, was uh, one of the co-founders of Checkpoint Software, a cybersecurity company. And uh, we have entrepreneurs in residence, some of whom have already then gone to start uh, companies, which we help to, um, to do the venture formation. They come without the relevant background. So we really help initiate them into the healthcare space, but they bring with them a lot of um, experience, which is very relevant to succeeding in the healthcare space. For example, you know, people who work at uh, the Googles of the world, the Facebook of the world, and understand the um, direct-to-consumer uh, element and how to uh, grow companies uh, is something which uh, is invaluable when you also set up a healthcare uh, company. So this is something that we we see increasingly happening in the uh, ecosystem in Israel, and I think it's something to watch, uh, to keep an eye for, and it also helps explain the you know the new number of companies that you've talked about in every year. Is the number is growing, and this is uh, definitely uh, part of that. Thank you, Ron. We will come back to you later about some example in AI or in digital therapeutics, which is a unique. Uh, uh, a unique uh, subsector. So, uh, Leo, you 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 are you are in a very early stage fund, which is, uh, and you will describe what you do in Futurix, which is focusing mainly on. Uh, on uh, I remember on, on biotech development. I, I would like to 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 see from your point of view, and especially in drug development, how the 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 computational biology and all the big data analytics is uh, you see it coming as a new way of uh, of uh, bringing innovation in precision medicine you you mentioned something very specific on uh, non oncological uh, pathology or disease yeah. sure thing <clears throat> thanks Lauren so so I'll First of all, as a brief intro on FutureX, so uh, I, I lead this development for FutureX, which is the the biotech incubator, the Israeli biotech incubator, created by J and J, Takeda, and Orbimed, and also with Bayer, uh, Bayer's Leaps Fund as an investor. And our focus, as you correctly mentioned, is on company creation in the therapeutic space. So we we deal with not digital therapeutics, but old school therapeutics, biotech, and pharma. Uh, and we've done the, that for the past seven years, but over the past, I would say two years, we're putting more and more emphasis on computational and AI enabled technologies that will assist us in drug discovery and patient identification. So I can give, I can give three examples from our existing portfolio and then also a couple of trends that we're looking at more actively now uh, that relate to that. So we have, uh, we have recently created three portfolio companies, each one with its own computational angle. So we have created Circuit Bio, which is a synthetic biology company. So here we're dealing with gene therapy based uh, uh, interventions, but the design of those is actually designed in a way of creating uh, gene based circuits that will allow us to manipulate tumor cells. So here we're actually using molecules as our computational matter to allow us to very accurately and selectively target, uh, target uh, cells and manipulate them. And we apply a lot of AI in planning those circuits to begin with. A second company that we've recently created in a partnership with AdamWise is A2I Therapeutics. AdamWise is one of the leading uh, AI drug discovery companies in the world based in the US. And we've partnered to together target hard to drug targets in the oncology space. And here we're applying AI methodologies for drug discovery in silico as ways of overcoming uh, past failures and targeting those targets, which I think there's a consensus in the scientific community that are interesting, but no one has really succeeded to drug up till now. And uh, 
And the third example from a portfolio is a more recent company called Skip Therapeutics. Here we're targeting a, a space that has been get, getting some more attention recently, which is rare diseases, genetically based rare diseases. And here the company started from a pure computational basis, scientists from bar Ilan University and a Hebrew University, which uh, with, with, specific, with expertise in bioinformatics and computational biology, but the platform they've created will allow us to really target treatments for rare diseases and more specifically to target it personalized for patients within those rare diseases and to design those drugs. So in a way we're talking about precision-based rare disease treatments. We apply the computational engine and then also create the drugs themselves, RNA-based drugs in this case, to treat the patients. So in all of these cases, we really, we're still doing drug development. We're still working in the lab with molecules, but we're applying very strong computational technologies to assist us. And in parallel to that, also some of our, I would say more traditional companies in the small molecule space are partnering with computational and in silico drug discovery companies. Some of them are Israeli-based, some of them are, are not based in Israel, but want to have activity in Israel to really have a more efficient drug discovery and drug optimization process uh, in their workings. So that's something that we've been doing more and more. And, and to reflect on the trends that we're looking at, so precision medicine is obviously something that's been talked about for years, mainly in oncology. We're trying to do more and more in precision medicine now outside of oncology. To look at uh, a topic that's been close to my heart for many years, which is, which is chronic patient management, and see how we can tailor precision based medications to those patients, patients with autoimmune conditions or cardiovascular diseases, where we can really tailor the right treatments for the right patients with diagnostics to accompany patient selection and also to accompany disease monitoring and prognostics of those treatments. So those are just some of the things that we're doing now uh, at the future X to really uh, get the, the best of both worlds, I would say. So it's a Perfect example is uh, even though your, your incubator is dedicated to drug discovery and biotechnology, the, you are completely inside the digital health uh, frame and, 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 and evolution. So that, that's really interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to Eyal, who is heading uh, this incubator, which is as well a hybrid between tech and uh, and biotech, I would, I would be happy to hear you, you, your voice about the, the way you, the focus you have in Galileo Fake, but as well, how do you rely on, uh, on the, the data that you can gather from your different partners and the infrastructure behind you? Thank you, Laura. Obviously, we are in Galileo Fake as an incubator. We are an early stage investors. Um, and we have uh, four family office services that are happy to invest, not just in the incubator, but also in funds that we have afterward. One of our unique assets is the infrastructures that we're building for the early stage company and especially for telemedicine company. What we realize is that we have a unique shareholders, which is the Clalit. The Clalit is uh, one of the largest structure, has the largest structures, health records, database worldwide with more than uh, two decades uh, of ID and geotax data of 4.7 million members. You, you can explain what is Coupatrol in Clalit for the audience. <laughs> Health fund. It's, it's actually the second largest HMO in the world with 1,500 uh, community clinics and 14 hospitals. Uh, which also providing us the, the data records that uh, have also not just about personal data records, but also labs, imaging, pharmacy, social demographic database, and add to add cost for whatever it costs uh, to do the treatment. What, what we are doing is we try to provide in order to have the, the tele, we, are, we now focus on telemedicine companies. We understand that we need to give them the central database of obviously it's synthetic data, we are connecting them into periphery clinics. We are combining those uh, companies with one of our hospitals. And of course, we, whichever uh, medical records they need, we can provide them. This can provide uh, um, not just the, the funding, but also the service that can help companies in order to obtain whatever they need to. 
uh, actually we are creating a one-stop shop with all the atmosphere to make it happen. Uh, in order to provide all, all the above, we actually last year opened a branch in one of the Kalalit hospitals in, in the north of Israel, the IMEC hospitals. And actually we have companies that are sitting within the hospitals and using the infrastructures that the, uh, the hospitals and obviously the Kalalit can provide them. We believe that if we can give them the infrastructure, the database, we can provide them with, with the clinical uh, uh, assistance, Helsinki, whatever they need, this is the way that we can take the telemedicine companies and actually make them work on, on things that really matter. We have one example, if we have a few examples in our uh, incubator. One of them is that we are taking a challenge of taking sleep labs from the hospitals into the, into the houses of, of the patients. And, and we are using all the above mentioned, all the above that I just mentioned in order to provide this company the infrastructure that they need. And I, I, I do believe one thing, Lorraine, is that obviously we have an, an advantage in Israel with, with the data and everything. But we see that this advantage is closing by other companies and other countries. So we believe this is a, a limited time adventures and, and we should do our best in order to make it happen. Okay, Th thank you, Ayan, for this uh, angle on telemedicine uh, with, with early stage companies and, and your relationship with this uh, huge HMO, which I believe gives a very interesting uh, advantage. Uh, Ophir, uh, eHealth Ventures, what do you do and, and tell us about uh, the link between government and private sector, which is um, today the, the main support of the, 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 the new startups. Thanks, Luan. And uh, it's harder to be last after my learned colleagues. So I'll try not to repeat uh, the wisdom that was already handed out. Uh, we are a partnership which is a combination of an incubator, which is focused on the early stage world and a VC targeting the more advanced companies. And unlike the others, we are exclusively focused on digital health. So that's the only type of investment we do, diagnostics, therapeutics, and this whole shift to home care. And this trend of moving from hospitals to the point of care and further on to the patient's house has been obviously accelerated by COVID. And I, uh, we could talk for hours on the effect COVID had on digital health, which is a true game changer. In the base of the partnership, we combine the government, which provides us with very extensive non-dilutive funding, which attracts obviously the entrepreneurs and the expertise coming from the private sector uh, first and foremost, Maccabi, which is another uh, large HMO in Israel, not the largest, but by far the most advanced technologically with the most digital data and the most digital uh, productization within the local landscape. And we've added... Productization, just, just explain what you mean. When the provider, such as Maccabi, picks up one of our companies and creates a product from its development and makes it available to the general population, that means we've picked the right company because now it's not just an idea, it's a product okay. for me and you and the other patients or the, the clients of, of this HMO to use. So having them on one side and the access to the digital data, and on the other side, having giants like the Mayo Clinic uh, which is this, this is their first early stage partnership outside of the US and Amgen uh, on, on our side helps us really attract uh, the most uh, advanced, I would say companies in digital health. We're specifically looking for bioconvergence. And, and you mentioned this in one of your slides, the way that innovation is generated from universities, from TTOs, from the academia, from the military, and the way it combines the wet side of life sciences, namely biology, biomarkers, genomics, with the dry side of the innovation, namely optics, physics, 
engineering and software. This, this is really a, a major growth engine for the Israeli economy. The government is giving us doubled budgets if we focus, if we find companies in this space. We already have three. Well, what do you mean to us? It's uh, specifically to your group or it's a general? Uh... It's a general rule. The government is promoting this subsector, which is called bioconvergence, which you detailed. It sees Israel as a potential global leader in the field. So the budgets are larger. The regulation is lower. It's easier to bring products to the market. And we've done that with two companies that are examining Uh, blood with a very unique CBC device for the home, for the patient to do his own blood tests. And for a urine analysis device, which is embedded in the toilet. So no more peeing in that degrading little cup in the lab, but go as you're used to going and get a fully spectroscopic analysis of the urine literally on the fly. So that, that's an example of bioconvergence. And we're trying to develop a center of excellence around that. I think that as, as we grow and we shift our focus from earlier stage companies to more advanced commercial phase companies with this new fund that we've established, we really can see uh, this industry maturing in Israel. So maybe larger rounds on a lower number of companies, but more challenges focused on uh, business models, who is going to pay, reimbursement, regulation. We're kind of moving from the startup phase to the scale-up phase. I know it sounds like a cliche, but I think that's, that's something that we're all experiencing right now. Uh, perfect transition to my next question, from startup to scale-up. Uh, and I wanted to ask Roy, because you, you are the one who is all found on early stage and on late stage. Uh, wh wh where do you see in the digital health ecosystem or maybe in the digital therapeutic, where do you see the, the, the capacity to scale up? We always had in the past in Israel this uh, recurrent issue of not building an industry except Teva, which is... Uh, a unique example, and that we don't have a, a J&J or any other pharma that are growing to become a sustainable and, and long-lasting large, large company. I, I want to know where, if we, because of the digital health um, uh, growth today, the growth engine, where, with, how do you see uh, the, the, the future of this, of this industry or subsector with respect to growing and having uh, uh, sustainable companies? I, I don't know if I express myself, but you... No, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a good question. I mean, one of the mission statements of Imun was also to help uh, turn the uh, life sciences and health tech into one of the main growth engines of the Israeli uh, economy. And just to put things in perspective, you know, you showed uh, about 1,800 companies in this field This is out of a total of about 6,500 startups in Israel in total. So this is a, a very large portion. A big quote. Um, yes. Yeah. And uh, when you combine it with an industry, which is actually much bigger than that of uh, cyber security. And, you know, Israel is, has in cyber security already uh, several uh, unicorn uh, companies, more, you know, more, uh, even more than $10 billion in valuation, you can understand the potential uh, that we have here for uh, in digital health. Um, obviously, you know, the, the, proof, uh, the proof will be the pudding in terms of uh, this actually uh, uh, mature, um, you know, reaching the maturity level. But, you know, what, what we have seen in, in the ecosystem here is larger and larger rounds by companies. Uh, we also, you know, think that the uh, uh, ability to do an IPO in recent years have also encouraged companies and founders to look at taking it all the way. So coming in with the mindset of how do we build a company to last, a company which will be built here, not how to build a company to sell, uh, you know, to be acquired by a large uh, strategic 
and this change of uh, of you know mind um, mind shift is is, is crucial uh, in that sense. And you know when you combine it also with the access to capital. So you know part, and again, if I, if I look at the moon, the reason that we've raised a very large uh, growth fund, seven hundred fifty million dollars, was in part because we wanted to allow Israeli companies that are looking to do the large rounds to have also a local investor that understands the local ecosystem, you know, the DNA, uh, but also understand the international components that help them build large uh, companies here. So I'm, I'm confident that, you know, if we have this discussion a few years from now, we will already be able to point at concrete uh, examples. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, we are seeing companies reaching, you know, very significant already revenue, significant rounds. And I think this is our the steps in the way of getting to the destination that you mentioned in your question. But that's a question for you and for everyone. But do you believe because of the outstanding opportunity we see with digital health, it will come from this sector? Because we did in Israel, it did not occur with biotech, with pharma, or with medtech so far. It was always exit and selling. Do you believe that there is the opportunity because of this new field and which is merging and converging from different uh, uh, expertise and industries? It's the, the opportunity or it will be, it's because the whole industry of life science is evolving. I don't know who wants to, because you all see companies that are created by serial entrepreneurs that have that in mind somewhere. I, if I can, you know, continue, I, I don't necessarily think, you know, it will be exclusive to digital health. But if I go back and touch on the tech to health that I mentioned before, when you have entrepreneurs that have done that before in other companies, they understand what it takes to scale a company, to build operations, to go global, to build now their offices in the, uh, you know, in the U.S. or Europe. Some of them are relocating uh, there in order to, to build it. So, and, and I think it also plays into some of the strengths of the Israeli ecosystem. So you have here a lot of um, know-how, for example, you know, in, around imaging, um, AI, things that, that people bring from the army. For example, you know, we have companies in our portfolio, such as uh, IBEX, that is doing AI in the um, uh, you know, pathology uh, space. Um, so, when you do that or when you have companies that are looking to go direct to to consumer and that's where also israeli companies have been in the in the general tech have been uh, successful and have a lot of experience even in the you know how israelis disrupted insure tech for example then i think this is where you can see a lot of benefits and uh, sort of synergies coming together in order to capitalize on all of that in digital health specifically Thank yes. you. And yes. somehow, oh, somebody wanted to complete? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Alexandra, you are in, uh, in one of the most, uh, the largest uh, pharma diagnostic company in the world. Uh, how, how does it seem from Roche's standpoint to be part of the initiation of new, uh, of innovation in startups? And but in the same in the same way the, the partnership group and the MNA group in Roche is is really uh, hungry for for innovation to integrate in the in the corporation. So <clears throat> how do you see these two uh, parallel objectives from from a corporate point of view being an actor here? Yeah. So so I think there is um, first of all we need to differentiate a bit between um, Roche Diagnostics and and Roche Pharma. Um, okay. And obviously, I mean, in Israel, we have uh, a Roche Pharma affiliate and uh, we have a distribution on the side of diagnostic. Um, but uh, uh, the, the pharma uh, side of the organization has always been engaging on both early, very early stage, such as ac academic collaborations, for instance, and uh, as much as on the uh, late stage. Uh, 
And uh, whereas on the diagnostic side, I mean, the tendency was more actually on the later stage uh, to engage with external uh, companies and, and engage on external ecosystems. So here, um, there, is a, there is a bit of a shift in that sense, um, because we uh, what we have been experiencing also is, is when we are engaging with more mature company and uh, we are looking into this, uh, uh, those integration questions where we're looking at bringing more holistic solutions to patients, um, that integration does not necessarily happen very seamlessly when, when the companies are very mature. And so one of our uh, belief is that uh, if, if we are able actually to engage earlier um, in, in the development phases, um, and even, you know, since inception in that sense, uh, we would be able to help those company in making sure that certain requirements would be met and uh, also in making sure that we could be foreseeing uh, potential integration uh, towards those more holistic solutions in the future. So um, I think that that's that's a bit of the angle that uh, that we have. I mean, engaging with the Israeli innovation ecosystem, and I think the um, the, the the interest that we have is obviously. I mean, there is uh, such a uh, such a culture for innovation in Israel, and a lot of thinking out of the box, and a lot of cross pollinated uh, uh, technologies, and and uh, back to this uh, convergence uh, uh, point that you raise which actually also provides uh, opportunities to, to tap into more of the, let's say, moonshots in that sense, and uh, which are actually very important. I mean, let's name, for instance, quantum computing. I mean, this is one of the area at the moment that is blooming in, in Israel. Uh, this is obviously, I mean, uh, very much uh, yet uh, looked at on the side of pharma because it's it, there are already some very concrete use cases um, related to drug discovery. Uh, this is still more, I would say, embryonic on the side of uh, diagnostics, but but this is clearly um, um, uh, picking up. So I, I'm really expecting more um, of you know of of this. Uh, uh, innovation. I mean, coming coming from the country, and this is really where also the interest uh, is uh, coming from the side of Roche. Okay, great. No, no, no. Look, you know, I, I totally agree with Roy and Alexander. Look what we have here. We have we have the culture that actually promotes innovation. We are very early adopters. We have the multidisciplinary concepts in Israel that can combine military technology with medical technology or, or cyber uh, aspects uh, with AI. So and we're not afraid to combine all them together. And obviously, uh, as uh, Ophir said in, in uh, Maccabi, and obviously with the Klalit, there are two large HMOs in Israel with unique concept of, da of data that can go, go along, I don't know, for 10, 10 20 years which can actually supply the, the roof and, and the, the data and, and whatever it's needed in order to uh, combine all those tools together and provide something in the end of the day that can everybody look at Israel as someone that brings new, new companies to the world. It's quite unique here. Well, um, maybe if I can add a few, a few words. So, go, go ahead, John, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so you asked Roy before about the, about the possibility of having a significant company here in the digital health space, et cetera, let's say a Teva-like company in the digital health space. And I think, I think we need to have a different perspective here because in many aspects, digital health companies are technology, but also product and utilization. And in that case are very much aligned to the geography and more importantly to the regulatory and reimbursement ecosystems in which they operate. So I don't expect necessarily to have a commercial activities in Israel that will serve global use cases in healthcare. But I think what we can see already developing here is a huge basis of knowledge and tool and technologies and tools. So if we have the human capital here developed to a very significant critical mass, we can again look, look at Israel as a sandbox for technologies, but here for healthcare. Same has been uh, uh, the same thing that was done for tech for many, many years. Now we also have unicorn tech companies here in Israel. 
So I envision the same thing going on for digital health and health tech, and also AI and drug discovery where we, and computational biology, where we're seeing more and more academic groups and more and more graduate students, which are starting their own companies and uh, taking positions in companies. So I think it's the knowledge basis that's really, really expanding. Uh, I really uh, agree with, with both of you. Um, and, and this use base of knowledge is, uh, is probably a, a unique uh, a unique feature of the of the ecosystem. I, I completely agree. Um, Ophir, you you mentioned you you are working with a, an American big pharma, um, and and as well locally with the government. How how, how do you see? Uh, of course, we have the example which is not in uh, in digital of of the Pfizer. Uh, data agreement about the, 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 the COVID-19 vaccine, which is on a very visible scale, a very visible way. Uh, but, but more, um, do, do you see collaboration with big corporations like Amgen that, who is working with you uh, that will help fostering uh, uh, development of, of new companies? How, how does it work? So, I, I know from, from our experience with Amgen and, and with other pharma that it is hard for them to accept the early stage mindset. Mm -hmm. These large corporations move slow. They have almost unlimited funds and they are willing to wait and pay a premium if needed for a lower risk project. So it's hard to present these super early stage projects to them. And, and we've done it several times. Sometimes it works. But, but it's it's very rare. So I want to provide maybe a more pragmatic, perhaps provocative way of, of viewing the digital health industry. I think it's it's more practical. For the Israeli ecosystem, which does not have many local farmers and does not have many large VCs like, like, like Amun, it's, it's a practical industry. The time to market is much shorter than any bioproduct or most of them. The regulation is not as harsh at this point. I'm sure it will be, but it's still pretty flexible. And it takes less time and less money to bring a digital health product to the market. So for investors and for pharma partners and for incubators and, and for this whole ecosystem in Israel, I think it's, it's an ideal way to generate quick wins easy successes, not easy, but easier perhaps, and build this industry uh, bottom up before we think of a new Teva or any other multi-billion unicorn. I think we should have a strong grassroots base of many companies that have completed technology development and are starting to generate some market traction. And after we have a few tens of those, then the bigger guys will follow and the farmers will appreciate the strength of this industry. And that's what we're trying to create here. Okay. So that, that was for the, the corporate uh, officer that are look, look, listening to this panel uh, from, from the different pharma. Network. Exactly. Exactly. That was my pitch. For now, we have a few minutes left. I would like to hear each of you to address the investor side. We have today, uh, in the listening to this panel, many investors from Europe, US, and China that ha that are registered. Uh, I, I, I saw the, the the large base of investors that are looking at this program. What would be your recommendation to co-invest with you in the Israeli uh, startups that you know that you already have or that you will have in your portfolio? Can you say, and in one in one sentence or, or two, what will be the, the most important thing to look when they, they look to digital health opportunities? What, what do you recommend them to to look? J just a short main main point that you will recommend. Eyal, you want to start? I think we always should start at least in what we're doing with the unmet need. Obviously, we're working with the largest uh, uh, health institute in Israel. So it's easy for us to identify what is the true unmet need. When we identify the true unmet need, 
then we can go forward into investment. Meaning that if you invest with us, we are actually going to an unmet need in the industry, trying to find a solution for it. We have the infrastructure to test it, and then maybe we can do something good together. Okay, good. Um, Leo? Uh, so, so for us, our goal is always to find interesting and new biology to invest in. And I will encourage investors looking at us in our portfolio to look at the novel biology that we're targeting. So uh, there are a lot of interesting biotech companies around the world. I, I feel and I believe that our portfolio companies and the ones that we, and the opportunities rising here in Israel also target novel biological pathways that are rising as interesting ones. So computational based and more traditional biological based opportunities and RNA therapy, for instance, and, and immunology, et cetera. Okay. Of you? Uh, I'm trying to stay away from, from the obvious. Yeah. Large markets, no niche, unmet need. We've all covered that and we've been doing this for, for enough years. I think the main question in this new industry is how do I get paid? Who is going to sign the check at the end of the day for this super interesting, exciting product, changing the world, making healthcare better, saving money? Somebody needs to make a, a, a mindset change and understand that this is the future of medicine. And, and we're still not there. So thinking of the business model in day one and asking who will make the payment is, is key for us when we look at investing. Okay. Okay, important angle. Why? Yeah, I mean, I think basically in every investment we make, we have uh, co-investors and uh, from across the world. You know, the US, Europe, and, and Asia. So we have done this uh, over and over again. And again, not to repeat what uh, others have said here, I think actually the size of Israel is an advantage in the sense that Israeli digital health companies are looking very early on to uh, engage the big international markets. I mean, the, because the local ecosystem is just not big enough uh, in order to be, you know, a uh, major revenue uh, generator and this early friction with uh, the big markets is is essential in order, in order to get to the right product market fit in order to do to reach uh, quick growth and uh, this is something that uh, we always uh, look for together with the right team of entrepreneurs that have the ability to execute because in uh, Particularly in digital health, it's not so much about the IP, but it's about the ability to execute on a, on a great idea, which uh, meets a real market. Okay, that, that's a, a, a nice way to 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 conclude as well. Uh, Alexandra, you you would like to, even though you are not asking investor to co-invest with Roche, from Roche, I don't think not yet. But what, what's your view about it with all the, the company you are screening today? No, so, so first I would like to really echo on the comments of Lior and, and to a certain extent also what, what Roy mentioned. I mean, it, it's, it's really a fantastic sandbox. I mean, that, that's, that's so, so right in the sense that uh, we see the, uh, in terms of, again, um, tapping into early innovation and um, uh, early experimentation as well. I mean, it, all the elements are, are there. And um, I think it, it's true on the side of uh, the research and development, but it's true also um, on the side of uh, uh, commercialization. Uh, I think the learnings can really come through and, and, and then of course this can expand to other markets. So um, th that is really um, uh, what I could tell, I would say to other investors, uh, um, uh, the way that we are uh, looking at the opportunities uh, in the Israeli market. Okay, thank you. So I believe we are at, at the end of this panel. Uh, we, we had a very nice review. I wanted to warmly thank you the five of you and and SACS conference for for the organization we, we review very precisely I, i'm really happy that we had so many examples about the different technological breakthrough that between life science and high tech moving to this convergence 
and especially around the digitalization of, of the world. I, I really believe there is a, it's a completely open and the future will show us how, uh, how it could be beneficial for the, the patient. So thank you very much. Uh, wishing, you, wishing you a great day and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.